Hey, greetings. I'm once again uh, Favine here at ProMorphicon, and I'm here today with Jonathan Ying. And Jonathan, what do you do or where will we know you from? So I am the game designer behind Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid, the board game produced by Renegade Games. Yeah, and I'm sort of the guy behind all of the content and development for that game line, which is now the Guardian system. So we're doing a bunch of other games in that system. Uh, including like G.I. Joe and a bunch of other stuff. But uh, primarily it was made for Power Rangers and we've got a whole bunch of Power Rangers content for it, so I'm super hyped. <laughs> you know, since I got you and you brought up the Guardian system, can you explain a little bit more what that is? So the Guardian system is a uh, board game design that came about when we were talking about what a good Power Rangers game would look like. And I think a uh, way I've described to other folks is that it's sort of like almost like a tower defense type of game, except instead of building towers, you're controlling heroes. And so over the course of the game, uh, the evil space aliens will be sending putties and monsters to attack uh, various locations, and the rangers will team up and go to different places to defend themselves. And battles are done in sort of a card-based combat system, and over the course of several rounds, you're going to fight a bunch of foot soldiers, two monsters, and a boss. And it's sort of designed to do like a Power Rangers story arc in one session. And each player takes control of one ranger. In some variants uh, and some modes, you can control more than one ranger. But generally, each player has one ranger. And uh, each ranger has a unique kit of unique mechanics where they work with their allies and independently to fight off monsters and do cool tricks. When creating this system, you could obviously have done it with anything else. <laughs> Why Power Rangers? I mean, so when Scott approached me, uh, Scott Data, who runs Renegade Games, he first approached me because he had got the Power Rangers IP from Saban. And he was like, okay, I need to find a designer who like knows what, what he's doing. And uh, when we sat down for lunch, he was like, hey, you don't know anything about Power Rangers, do you? And I was like, listen, hold on now. I actually tried to really hard to contain my enthusiasm because like he couldn't know that I would do this for free. <laughs> Like, but no, like I was able to, we talked about it and I, you know, I've been a Power Rangers fan since I was a very tiny child. And so like I immediately went home and was like, okay, what kind of game would suit Power Rangers best? Uh, I'm most known for tactical games like Doom the Board Game and uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault, uh, which has a lot of like kind of grid-based combat stuff. And uh, I did a couple versions with that, which didn't quite feel right for Power Rangers. Like, you're not really worried about, like, the specific positioning or, like, the range of your attacks or, like, that sort of tactics uh, isn't really what Power Rangers is about. It was more about teamwork and about doing cool tricks and doing, like, combo moves. And so I sort of abstracted it. I kind of came back and was like, all right, so let's get... You know, you're fighting a bunch of foot soldiers and we'll give them each sort of special actions. And I sort of built it out like a really tight RPG. A lot of the influences are things like Grandia 2 and Chrono Trigger, where it's like, okay, you want to combo your actions to like get this enemy in, like into this state to be defeated by an ally and like trying to interrupt enemy actions. And that's sort of where that core system came about. And then uh, we wanted to make sure it was cooperative because it felt like Power Rangers as a brand is so much about friendship and teamwork and working together that it qu didn't quite feel right for this game to be a head-to-head -head game the way, say, like the uh, deck builder which we recently put out is more about like one player kind of controls the evil space aliens, one pl player controls all of the ranger side. And that works really well for that, but for Heroes of the Grid, I think we really wanted to focus on cool teamwork. We did eventually add a mastermind mode where one player can control the bad guys. So that, that turns it into a competitive game. Uh, and that is in the um, Rise of the Psycho Rangers pack, which sort of introduces, hey, evil rangers and like an evil player controlling them, uh, which sort of brings back that Imperial Assault one versus many combat system. So I got Sorry a chance. For rambling. <laughs> no, you're 100% fine. This interview is all about you, not me, but it is going to be about me. Um, <laughs> so I got a chance to play a little bit uh, yesterday. The game was actually introduced to me by some, literally some dude I met in line <laughs> waiting for my pass. And he was just like, have you ever played this game? And I was like, never heard of it and he was like well they're here you got to check it out and he kind of pushed me this way got a chance to play a little bit and I was like you know what I feel like I should talk with these people <laughs> as you know for my the interview and stuff and actually you know get it out there because I was like because if I haven't heard about it who else hasn't heard about mm -hmm. it right so like let's get the people out of there and I did see that you guys have so many expansions out already how many more do you think you still have left to go? Oh, man. I mean, like, so we sort of talked about it. I think we initially planned for the game to have, like, about a two-year tail, right? That's kind of the average for one of these 
types of games where it's like, okay, you know, a couple, like two years of expansions. Uh, we're going on like year five now. <laughs> So it's definitely done way better than we had initially planned. Um, we also kind of really front-loaded the game at, at its launch because it was during the Hasbro Saban changeover. And so we actually weren't sure what the state of the license would be. But after, you know, working with Hasbro has actually been pretty good for us. And they've, like, been very open to us continuing the game line. So, uh, yeah, we're basically going to kind of keep making it as long as we can. I think uh, we did early polls on, like, oh, hey, who's the next team going to be? Unsurprisingly, Zio won the first poll because, like... Yeah, so it went uh, Mighty Morphin to Zeo. Yeah, since then we've done Hyperforce, we've done Space, we've done uh, Dino Thunder. Uh, we kind of are sort of working our way through. We don't want to do it directly chronologically, because otherwise it'll take us like 20 years to get to Dino Charge, which would not be right. Uh, but even so, we're still, it's still kind of unfortunate that like a lot of players are like, hey, when are you going to get to, you know, Dino Fury? You know, it took us a long time to get to like Ninja Storm. So we do mini expansions that are like grab bags. So it's like the Allies packs contain a big mix so we have an ally pack that has like the mercury ranger uh from overdrive we've got one that has uh ninja storm green like we kind of try and mix those into at least there's some amount of representation for every season i think there's only one or two seasons that have zero representation so far so we're trying to get that coverage while also you know getting to series that people truly love so that's been a whole endeavor and figuring out which one to do next is always a big like stressful thing because like you know it's going to disappoint somebody because every season is somebody's favorite and one of them's going to have to be last in my interview with uh super seven we talked a little bit about you know like what they would like to do and see next and he brought up uh the comics oh yeah are you guys interested in doing like a lot of the comics so we've done uh some of the comics exclusive characters actually we did uh like the first expansion was about lord dracon shattered grid and then we did uh we've got the omega rangers in the game when they added dane to the comics i was like oh we got to do this guy this guy's so cool uh so we added dane as like a really mean nemesis villain and uh yeah so we've definitely been dipping into the comic stuff i know like kyle higgins is always like it. kyle higgins has played the game and is very excited whenever he sees one of uh the new characters pop up yeah so the comics are definitely one that we're always excited to add but it's always a balancing act right like there's some monsters that were unique to the comics that were like oh this would be cool but like do we really want to put this in instead of you know thrax right what is the value proposition of each of those things and uh yeah so we're trying to be mindful about that we're definitely all big fans of the comics a lot of the artists that we use are actually from boom studios like oh you guys should use this guy he's great uh dan mora did like all, almost all of the art for the base game and it's so good god dan mora is so cool i could talk for an hour about dan mora this stuff is pretty good Obviously, here at Hero Club, you know, we're just, we're more than just Power Ranger fans. Any idea to bring in any Super Sentai? Ooh, so, <laughs> I mean, I would love that. Like, uh, the big question is licensing, right? Like, Hasbro, like, we're working with Hasbro right now, so, like, a lot of the, you know, we've got Power Rangers, we've got G.I. Joe, and uh, whether or not we do Super Sentai is really up to the licensing department and it is unfortunately above my pay grade because if i were responsible for it we'd already be doing common rider like we would be doing uh like lupon ranger would be like expansion too like i mean i'm there's a bunch of sentai series i would love for us to get into but it seems like at the moment like a lot of the audience is primarily the ranger audience and if we could you know in time like never say never right like i would really love to get some more sentai content like some proper sentai content even to mix it in but, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, it is very funny to see Heroes of the Grid in Japanese, like the idea of, like, Japanese fans being like, ah, Zach Taylor, you know? That has to be super fun. I think the Lupin Ranger will want to be amazing because you can get so many people to play, and obviously they're playing against different sides against each right? other. But like, oh, it's so interesting. It's yeah. such a cool, like, I mean, that was one that, like, I was really curious about when we had first done the meetings with Saban. But, you know, uh, particularly in the Saban era, they were very uh, careful about the kind of brand Power Rangers was, right? They're very friendly. I think one of the rules that we had was, like, Rangers don't, like, fight each other unless they're, like, mind-controlled or, like, whatever. They get along. They're teamwork. They're, like, friendship. And, like, also Rangers aren't pirates, for example. You know, uh, that's, like, not the kind of storytelling. So, like, I imagine being Phantom Thieves was probably on that line. So, like, I was dubious that Saban would ever do Lupin Ranger. We'll see if Hasbro thinks the same. I don't know. This is all rampant speculation on my part, of course. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So, I know this. you guys have uh, the other RPG system going on with your with your tabletop, yep. you know, your G.I. Joe tabletop. Your, yep. I believe there's Transformers. Yep, we got Transformers. Uh, we got and Power Rangers. Rangers. 
Uh, and I think even My Little Pony. Yep, My Little Pony, Tales uh, of Equestria. Will we ever see a spinoff to where I can have a team of Optimus Prime, Snake Eyes, Twilight Sparkle, and Jason on the same uh, team? I do believe the goal of the RPG systems is to allow for that kind of crossover. I believe that the RPG system that was developed for these games was intended to cross over, which does actually lead to a couple of confusing moments when you're reading them, because it's like, oh, in the, like, what's your armor rate? Like, what kind of armor do you wear as a Power Ranger? It's like, what? Wait a minute. Rangers don't really, unless you're the Dragon Shield, like, it's like, what does heavy armor mean? But that was kind of done primarily because it will be a necessary system to fall under other games like G.I. Joe or Transformers, like that sort of stuff. I'm not directly involved in the RPG side, uh, but I do like talk to them and I'm one of the lead lore guys for Rangers. Like sometimes when they have a question, they'll be like, hey, is this like a thing that's cool for in space or what have you? And uh, yeah, I'm on that team. So yeah, it's uh, the RPGs are a really fascinating setup and I think that kind of crossover is important to us. Like is kind of one of the most fun things about playing with these toys. The G.I. Joe Guardian System game is compatible with Heroes of the Grid. We have crossover rules to allow them to play together. And so you can already, like, if you, you know, have the G.I. Joe game and Rangers, you can do Snake Eyes teaming up with uh, the Mighty Morphin Rangers and, like, showing up. It all kind of makes sense because, I mean, if you think about G.I. Joe back in the day, they wore a pretty colorful cast of just, like, people in their own general uniforms. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. You know, you got uh, yeah. Shipwreck and, you know, teaming Absolutely. up with, like, yeah, they've got, like, like their funny stuff. themes. Yeah, 100%. I mean, like, we had originally planned on just doing, like, oh, a Snake Eyes promo for Heroes of the Grid as just, like, a guest character, as, like, a funny, like, goof. But eventually that ballooned out. It's like, hey, you know, we could just make the whole system. Like, we could just do that. Uh, we ended up just making G.I. Joe Mission Critical. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Maybe, like, uh, somehow Snake Eyes gets in there and he... I mean, I now know, you could just buy... It. Now you could just buy... Yeah, it's completely compatible. Like, if you get the Snake Eyes promo pack, there's, like, two Snake Eyes. There's one in the core box from Mission Critical, and there's one that's, like, a promo built to look like the action figure blister pack, which is very funny. But, yeah, you can play that character in both Mission Critical and in Heroes of the Grid. So, yeah, like, they're super compatible... Snake Eyes is specifically, unlike most other characters, is like Tommy Oliver in that he is built to be a soloist. He's built to fight solo and to uh, work independently. So yeah, that sort of fun quirk that not many Heroes of the Great characters have, because most Rangers are built to work together. Get ready to wind down, so I just want to open the floor to you. What do you have in the future to promote, or what would you like to see with your system itself? <laughs> Let's go with that first. What would you like to see with your system? If you can day one right now choose, and I know you already threw out the Lupin Ranger, yeah. but if you are walked in tomorrow and Hasbro was like, hey, do whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? Oh, God. Oh, man, that's a tough one. I think there's a whole bunch of different IPs that would be a really fun fit for the Guardian system. Like, I think for me personally, I've been playing a really alarming amount of Destiny 2, which I guess some people have described as being a Power Ranger in space based on, like, a lot of the crazy mechanics. But, like, I feel like that would be a really fun fit for the Guardian system. Not to say that, like, I, again, don't have any, you know, this is me as the designer. Like, I'm not in the licensing meetings. Like, I'm not responsible for this sort of stuff. But that's definitely something that I've been spending a lot of time on since the uh, new uh, season for that just came out. So, new expansion. And I've been having a great time with that. So... I mean, yeah, that's my current hyperfixation, right? Outside of game design, that is how I'm spending my off hours. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is Destiny next board game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything you want to promote, like anything coming out future or that you're working on? You've been uh, like, hey, keep your eyes out for this. Yeah, I mean, so like we just launched the uh, pre-orders for the next expansion for Heroes of the Grid, which is Light and Darkness. It's actually a box of all a bunch of rangers that were also evil at one point. So we have uh, Heckle and Snide, we have uh, Daishi and Gerard, we have a bunch like, you know, the Mercury Ranger and like his evil monster form, like, so that box is five heroes, five monsters, a bunch of foot soldiers. It's uh, sort of the more, the wackier theme for the big box expansion. Normally they're, those have been like, we did an in space one, we did a Shattered Grid one. So this one is more based on that theme than it is necessarily some specific story arc from the comics of the show. Uh, but that is definitely, I think, one of the coolest expansions we've ever, we've ever done. And uh, it's actually coming out really soon. Like, because of the way shipping delays ended up, we actually had it, like, done for a long time. So I'm finally excited to talk about it. But yeah, pre-orders are open right now for Light and Darkness. There's a promo pack with, like, a new power board and, like, all these other little kind of bonus tchotchkes that you can get if you pre-order it. But yeah, I'm super excited about that and getting to... We're going to do, like, some spoilers for it coming up to show off what's in the box soon. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that. 
Well, thank you. I've been Ivory. And I've been Jonathan Yang. And this is Pat Morphicon. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. <laughs>